Okay, so welcome back. And so now we're going to do a bunch of examples using these steps for solving linear equations. And so we're going to put everything together and go through the steps. So let's first look at part A. And so the first thing we're going to do here is we've got these parentheses. We're going to get rid of the parentheses by using the distributive property. And so this is going to become, um, let me do this. So this is going to become 28 equals 7x. Now I'm going to distribute the minus 3. So remember, this minus 3 goes with it. Or if you want, you can change it to a plus negative, right? And then the negative 3 goes with it, okay? So this would become a minus 3x plus 12. Okay, now... Now we're going to combine like terms, right? So we've got like terms here. So this is going to become 28 equals 4x plus 12. And so now, what happens? Well, now we're going to move, uh, we want the variable terms on one side, we want all the constant terms on the other. So we're going to subtract 12 from both sides, okay? And then what's that going to give us? That's going to give us 4x equals, what? 28 minus 12, which is 16, right? Okay. Now, again, I'm just using the symmetry pr principle here, so I just flipped it around, right? So, again, I could have wrote 16 equals 4x. It's the same thing, okay? So now, what I'm going to do, well, I can either multiply both sides by the reciprocal of 4, or I can just divide by 4, either way. So I'm going to elect to divide by 4. 4 divided by 4 is 1, so I get x. 16 divided by 4 is 4, and there's my answer, okay? And all I did was follow those steps. Okay, so let's look at this one now. Now this one here, I'm subtracting off this entire thing, and it's in parentheses. So that means, remember, pretend there's a 1 here. So basically, I'm going to be distributing a negative 1 using the distributive property. And so this will become 6 minus x minus 3 equals 2x. And so now I'm going to combine like terms. So I get 6 minus 3. So 6 minus 3 is 3. And I get 3 minus x equals 2x. And so now this is where I'm going to move the variable terms to one side, constant terms to the other. So in this case, I'm going to add x to both sides. And so what do I get now? I get... 3x is equal to 3. And so again, now I either multiply both sides by the reciprocal of 3, or I divide both sides by 3. So again, the coefficient is 3. So I divide both sides by 3. Again, 3 divided by 3 is 1. So I get x equals 1. Okay? So now... The next one. So notice here, we've got this fractional part, right? And so there's a couple of ways we could do this one, okay? We could treat it as a fraction, and we could have multiplication and division, or we can treat it uh, like a multiplication and multiply by the reciprocal. So here, I could divide both sides by 8, right? So let's do it that way. So I'm dividing, so it's 5x divided by 8, right? If you want to look at it, that's one way of looking at it. So if, I, if I'm dividing by 8, to move the 8 over here, I have to multiply by 8. So if I multiply both sides by 8, I get, well, 8 divided by 8 is 1, so I get 5x equals 
30 times 8. And then what do I have to do? If I divide both sides by 5, right, to get rid of the 5, and move the 5 over to the other side, so if I divide both sides by 5, I get 1 here, so I get x equals 30 times 8 over 5. Or, I can look at this as a multiplication type problem where I'm multiplying x by a fraction. Right? So what I can do is I can write this as 5 eighths x equals 30, right? And then what I can do is I can multiply both sides by the reciprocal, right? So I can multiply both sides by the reciprocal of 5 eighths, which is 8 fifths. And I get the same thing. 8 fifths times 5 eighths gives me 1, right? So I get 1, so that gives me x equals, and then of course, I get the same thing, 30 times 8 divided by 5. Okay? Well, 30 divided by 5 is 6. 6 times 8 is 48, and I get the same answer. Okay? x equals 48. Okay, now, what about d? Well, d, there's no parentheses, but we've got these fractions. So we've got, how do we handle these fractions? Well, just like we handle any other fractions. We're going to do the steps. So, what do we do? We have to combine like terms. Well, we've got three constant terms here that we can add together. They're, they're like terms, right? They're all constants. So, we have to get a common denominator. Well, to get a common denominator of 12, we would have to multiply the top and the bottom by 3 here. And we'd have to multiply the top and the bottom by 4 here. And so we, oh, and we can get the, well, in this case, we don't have to do that. So we can get 1 half z equals 3 twelfths plus 1 twelfth plus 4 twelfths. And so what do we get? Well, let's, let's simplify it now. So over here, we get 8 twelfths. So we get 1 half z equals 8 twelfths, right? Now, what I'm going to do, I can multiply the top and the bottom, or excuse me, I can multiply both sides by 2, right? The reciprocal of a half is 2. Or I can just divide by a half. But when I'm dealing with fractions, I typically just use multiplying by the reciprocal, okay? So here, I'm just going to multiply both sides by 2. So 2 times a half is 1, so I get z equals, okay? So now in this case here, let's cancel some things. Well, the 2 is divisible by 2, so that gives me 1. 12 is divisible by 2, so that gives me 6. So I get 8 sixths, but I can reduce that because 8 and 6 are both divisible by 2. So this is going to equal 4 thirds. And so z equals 4 thirds is my answer, or 1 and a third. Okay? Now, the last one deals with decimals. Okay? Oh, actually, before we go on to E, let's go back to D. Now, there is another way I could have done D. I could just get rid of all the fractions by multiplying everything by 12, okay? By, by multiplying by what's the lowest common denominator, okay? The smallest common denominator. So if I would have started here and multiplied everything by 12, because remember, if I use the, the multiplication principle, as long as I multiply both sides by the same number, I'm okay. So, I could multiply everything by 12 and get rid of the fractions and get an equation that just has integers. That would be fine. That's, that's typically the way I would do it. Okay? Now, what about this one? Well, here, what do we have? We've got a decimal. And so in this case, 
we, there's, there's no parentheses, there's no like terms to combine, we're, everything pretty much is simplified. We've got x, we've got all the variable terms on one side, constant terms on the other side. So all we have to do is just use the multiplication principle to solve for x, and in this case, just divide both sides by 2.8. And so if you do, you get x equals 1 half, or 0.5. Okay? So that's one way of doing it. The other way is to multiply both sides by a number that will get rid of the decimals. Well, what number would that be? 10, right? We just want to move the decimal point over one spot, right? If we, if we multiply by 10, we'll change the 2.8, we'll go to 28, the 1.4 will go to 14, and then we can continue on as before. And notice that the answer will not change, because if I multiply both sides by 10, this will become 28x equals 14, and then if you divide both sides by 28, you still get a half, okay? So again, it's just uh, a lot of times, so a lot of times when, when you're dealing with fractions and, and equations with fractions, you just want to get rid of the fractions, okay? And uh, if you, there's decimals, if there's decimal places in the coefficients, then typically we want to get rid of those as well. And the easiest way is to multiply by a power of 10, okay? Okay, just something to think about. That's it. Have a great day.